What's a woman? Hey everybody, welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie review podcast. I am Simeon Jimmy, and today the question of the day is, what is a woman? Thankfully, we've collected a panel of four cis white men to answer that question. Uh, joining me on my left is Mr. Florian Himsel. Yes, hello, welcome everyone. You gotta really get into this, this deep philosophical question. I, I just right. can't wait. To hear what, what a woman is. <laughs> oh, what, the movie didn't tell you? Oh, did it? And on my right, we have oh, <laughs> Mr. Low Res Wonder Bread. Oh, it's so great to be back. It's great to hear Florian's voice, by the way, and be on a call with Florian. He's got the most, like, pleasant German accent. He's very, uh, you know, if you ever did, like, an Augustus Gloop style character, <laughs> he'd be perfect for that. It's very jolly. It's nice. And our special guest. Well, thank you. Our special okay. guest today, hailing from three seasons of Survivor, the one and only Mr. Jeff Varner. Hey, what's going on? Jeff, I have wanted to talk to a Survivor contestant my entire life, and they all said no. So thank you for being the only agreeable person <laughs> from that whole show. <laughs> well, I'm probably the one nobody wants to, anybody to hear from, actually, but... Oh, no. Um, I, I consider it an honor, although I have to correct you, I do not identify as cis man. I am a man. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's not my word. I don't like that word. We can talk about that if you want to, but... Yeah, let's talk about everything. Uh, if you don't know, so this is a movie uh, that was made by Matt Walsh of The Daily Wire. Am I getting that right? Yes, yeah. He and, wrote a uh, book, I think, too, right? Well, he wrote a children's book about uh, oh. a walrus or something. I don't know yeah. about uh, his other books. But uh, let's just uh, let's dive right in. Uh, what did we think of the movie in general before we really get into the philosophy of it? Was it a good film? Um, well, I appreciated the cinematography by Shutterstock.com. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it seemed like a lot of like generic family shots that were probably well paid for. I mean, but it, I, as a documentary, I, I don't. I, I think it's kind of effective as a documentary. Um, yeah. I'll I'll pass it over to you guys though before I share more of my thoughts. So basically, it, I'm guessing most people are not going to watch this. Um, it's a series of interviews, and uh, I think he he went out of his way to find some of the more Looney Tunes uh, liberal people who uh, just, uh, they have some new age thoughts on gender and uh, and all that, and he's sort of in a, a daily show interview style kind of uh, memeing on these people. And, uh, and he just wants to know, what is a woman? And it seems like nobody can answer that question. Right, right, which is, you know, I, I understand what he's conveying here. As a documentary, you're going through like different spirals of, people talking in circles like what is a woman well i you know a woman's a woman a woman is uh you know a woman can be whatever you want it to be it's just like it's a mm -hmm. you know it's reducing the term to uh something that um has no definition you know mm -hmm. it's trying trying to validate the point of the title yes i agree with you i think if anybody can identify as a woman then women are obsolete right it's not they're not a special class did i lose you guys no, no, no. Yeah, we still oh, got you. Um, you know, if a woman is anybody who decides to be a woman, then there's no there's no classification as a woman, really, in the terms of how we know her today as an adult human female. Mm. Am yeah, I wrong? And that's really the conclusion that the movie arrives at. Uh, after asking all the experts and the therapists and, you know, the doctors, he just goes up to his wife and says, hey, honey, what's a woman? <laughs> and she says, oh, yeah, <laughs> an adult female. And then, yeah, that and was then, so choreographed. That was oh written yeah, in choreographed. <laughs> and then yeah. he had to like open a pickle Most jar for her. <laughs> you know yeah. what I noticed about that shot of him opening the pickle jar is that they hard cut away when he goes to open it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Perhaps it created drama for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those were the cheesy parts. I thought. I thought that you know, there were quite a few of those moments, but. I thought overall it, it's an important documentary. I think it's an important conversation to have. And I think so many people are so afraid to talk about it because of all the cancellations and being called a bigot and a transphobe and 
you know, I, I think there are legitimate questions people have and should have over it. And to be afraid to ask those questions or to say, slow down a second, I need to understand this is now affecting my children. I need to learn more about this. You know, just stopping that debate, preventing the debate is really problematic for me. And I think we saw a lot of that in this documentary, threatening to walk out, you know, when you got when it got a little tough, several of them. Yeah, they just get they out. give up and walk away. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, man, I'm, I'm afraid science. They don't I'm have afraid facts. right they don't now, man. Well, Florian, you are the most <laughs> liberal of the panel, so let's let's get the alternate perspective from you. Well, me a liberal? No, I'm I'm just so glad that we finally really nailed down this 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 definition so that we can finally tell between women and and fake women. You know, it, it's it's really so liberating, right? That we, that we don't have to pretend that, that trans women are women anymore, right? That, that's what this so, is all about, so right? So I, I think what this is about, and if I'm getting the philosophy wrong, somebody interrupt me, but it's the difference between biological sex and gender. And gender, yeah. as portrayed in the movie and explained, is uh, a social construct. So AKA, it's it's just made up. Like you, you can make up any gender you want. And if society yeah. sees you as that, then it's real. And I think that's a fine distinction to make. Right. W what would you say about that, Florian? Is that is it fair to have two different definitions of those terms? Well, I mean, there's like a lot that goes into definitions altogether. But like, I, I think it's it's probably like there's probably no point in like even worrying about definitions because it's it's such a simple question it's just like whether or not you respect trans people that's the only point of this this whole documentary right so no, I, I disagree we... with that i think you can you can respect trans people and at the same time not redefine what we've known woman to be for centuries yeah, and you centuries could, you know what i mean yeah you could just respect them without respecting them you know you just can say yeah, I, I don't think you're a woman, but I, in some way, I respect. It. I don't know how, but in, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think way. as soon as you say that, I think you've already lost the respect <laughs> game, Florian. <laughs> I, I think uh, your best case scenario, if you don't want to gender somebody the way they want, is to just not talk to them. I think that might be easy. Or gender them the way they want. Yeah, it doesn't change the fact that biologically they are not what they're presenting as, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, if that's how they want to be, I certainly I'm not an asshole. I, I can be, but I try not to be. If somebody wants me to refer to them as a certain way, then of course I'll do that. I, I have trans friends who are who they tell me they are. I don't question them. I don't say yeah, but biologically you're not that. You know? <laughs> you don't go into that. But right, at so the end of the day, I mean when you are defining woman and really where it becomes problematic is when it goes into policy, when it goes on paper, rules for athletic situations and laws for what can and can't be said, then, you know, we all are free to be who we are. But at some point when our freedom imposes on the freedom of others, that's where we have to stop and have a discussion, I think, and find the boundary and the common ground. And I think that even though Matt Walsh is very conservative, He's raising an issue that also troubles a lot of liberal people. And I think he's really got in his hands something I'm not sure he truly grasps. I think he's got a uniter there if he really thinks so, about sorry, it. I, people I, from both sides of this political spectrum <laughs> are on board with this issue. Because I'm, I'm just like having such a hard time getting this. I mean, this is, must be really some crazy definition so well so, so Flor you're... florian I, like you watch the whole movie right florian oh yeah, yeah. Wait, okay so florian, they... where are you from where's florian from austria oh okay oh i want to go there yeah Got close it. to australia i think it's closely they have the same letters <laughs> no, i think it's not <laughs> did you say he wants to he doesn't want to go here uh, i definitely want to go there absolutely my ancestors are from there bavaria and wow. switzerland and all up through that area so i have a genealogy trip yeah, well, it's my, crazy beautiful it's mountain. like the, yes. the mountains are are so so good i mean how do you even have a country without mountains i i, I will not understand it i guess yeah <laughs> especially mountains like that so in the sure, movie but i don't mean to sidetrack no but. no it's fine <laughs> um they they explore a few ideas of how uh these gender labels being mixed around uh cause potential harm to people uh, mostly with the trans athletes and they have a little cute montage of like all the the trans women who are biologically male just beating the fucking shit out of female <laughs> athletes which personally I, I thought was kind of funny 
Um, but do you guys yeah. do you guys think that's a big enough issue that we should like not be letting them compete? Well, I think it's actually like completely not an issue. It's just purely concern trolling. Like, you, are you sure? Like, do you think if, oh, for if sure, like yeah. Mike Tyson, if he came out as trans, do you want Mike Tyson fighting a woman? Well, I mean, no. What I'm saying is that it's not the point. Like, the point of this movie is is not to talk about that. Like, the point. Well, they is, talk about it quite a bit in the movie. I mean, you can specifically like ban trans women from from sports without like devalidating them being women. I mean, you well, can that's do the that. question though, because some people would disagree with what you just said. But. Yeah. Well, I mean, that may be true, but that's not the question of the movie, because the question of the movie is is if they're women. It's not even getting there yet, where it's the question of whether or not they should be participating. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, and I do agree with you. He's a conservative pundit, so this movie certainly had a, a lean to it, if you know what I mean. Like, it had the, the outcome was predetermined. It's going to be what he wants it to be. Yeah, that was my so main issue. A specific point of view. My and main issue with the that, film is that he starts off pretending like oh i just want to ask this innocent question and i just want to get the answer but then by the end he's like on dr phil preaching what he believes so clearly he had the bias the whole time in the movie never stood a chance at you know finding any truth absolutely but i think what's important is especially for the things happening in the u.s right now is that this conversation is had and i think so many people are afraid to have it and i think that's the value it brings um, so that we're not divided anymore. I'm so sick of division and just, I just hate all the stuff that's going on. And I think it's a conversation that has to happen and can bring people together. I, yeah, I'm our, so glad uh, you our say co-host that. Kino Corner was too afraid to be on this episode. So yeah, pe- even somebody <laughs> as ballsy as him is too afraid to talk about this. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. He, he refused to be on it. He said he doesn't want to talk about that in public. That's so unfortunate. Yeah. That's so unfortunate. Well, that's what we got you instead. I think you're a much better replacement. I think that's an upgrade personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got so many burning questions for you, Jeff. Like like again with the with your trans friends. So you you say that that you respect them, right? You 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 say you 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 go by what they want, right? With the agenda, but then your definition of woman doesn't include them. So so how do you how do you do that? Like, if they ask you, am I a woman, what do you say? They don't identify themselves as women. That's interesting, because I don't have friends who are trans women. My friends are all trans men. Right, so uh, so would you, you say they are? That. So to them, in their own words, they will say, I am a trans man. I am not a man. I'm a woman. But I'm a trans man, and this is who I am, and I identify as a man, and everybody in the world addresses him as a man. I do always and it's it maybe it's the type of trans person i have in my life but they're all of them will acknowledge publicly they are biologically what they were are at birth and that you can't change your sex so they acknowledge it's a courtesy thing so so that's specifically a quote then when they say i identify as a man but i am not a man that is something that they say to you yes there have you seen there's a bunch of them, dude. There's a ton of them out there. So they, they specifically, you. they specifically don't want to be in, included in the definition of, of a man. That is strange. Yeah, they know who they are. They, they know who they are. And, you know, there are legit. To me, I feel like what's happening is that there's a there's a whole new crew moving up underneath the LGBTQ whatever umbrella. And a lot of these people saying they're trans aren't. And I've met several of them. And the detransitioners that are out in the world that tell their stories, there's tons of them on YouTube you can find. They're in, on Twitter, they're everywhere. They illustrate that they were pushed down the wrong path. And I think that there's a we are confusing kids to a point where they think they can change their gender to solve their problems. And when you're experiencing gender dysphoria and it's a legit situation, that transition is what you need. And those folks I've learned want to just pass, you know, just let me go through life, leave me alone. I'm not gonna stand up here on the stage and scream to the world that I'm trans, I'm here, get used to it. But then there's this other group that I think some of the people, not to give any names, but one situation, 
um, and we see this a lot, is there is a, a young lady who was raped at the age of 12. Almost immediately, she cut all her hair off, started acting more masculine. When she was 13, 14, she was talking to a teacher about how she didn't feel like she fit in and that her her masculinity just made, you know, she just didn't connect to women. And the teacher told her, honey, you're trans, go look it up. That teacher was eventually fired for that, but that girl did go down that path. Oh, these days, that would be teacher of the year. They would have a parade yeah. for uh, him. <laughs> but this is just one personal story that I've seen with my own eyes. And by listening to the detransitioners and hearing from other people, what we're doing and making it so easily accessible and celebrating it like it's just a wonderful thing is really dangerous because kids who this is not meant for are going down that path and they're getting on cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers and removing their breasts and effectively sterilizing themselves there are plenty of people that you can see um i can send you some links where they are now, when Please they've don't. gone back, <laughs> they're, they're, they're no visuals, I promise. They go back to their feminine, original, you know, biological sex, and now they don't have boobs. Now they can't have babies, and they're devastated, and they're sharing their stories. But a lot of the people in this trans movement are working hard to silence their stories. They don't want people to hear that. The Transgender Journalist Association has a style guide they send to news organizations where it specifically says, do not speak to these people, put zero value in what they say. And as someone who is a reporter and a news anchor for 20 years, if I get a style guide that says, do not go there, that's the first fucking place I'm going. That's right. Because why are you wanting to hide that? And when I, when I, in doing some of my research, decided to go that direction, it completely opened my eyes to a lot. I have been left-leaning, liberal, Yay, LGBT, I'm 56, so I was on the street back in the 80s with the signs, and I was part of all of that. And this has really opened my eyes to see, you know, trans is beautiful and trans people should be respected and protected. But this other stuff that's happening, it's so dangerous, and we gotta, we gotta put some eyes on it and talk about it. And being afraid to is really dangerous, I think. Yeah, Florian, let's talk about, uh Kids, do you think they should be performing <laughs> these surgeries on children? Because that is, it does seem like an issue to me. I don't know if a, a child can really make that decision yet. Well, to be honest, if we if we're like thinking about it, if if you're asked, like if you're a man, like, surely you knew all along, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know. For all I know, I could be a woman. I just don't think about it. You, you know, like I it. really don't care. <laughs> right. So. I guess the chance would only exist that you would have like transitioned and it would have been for you, but you, you don't think that it, it could have gone. I mean, there's, there's no way that you could have falsely transitioned, right? Uh, it, let let me frame it a different way, because I, I don't want to seem like I'm anti uh, any particular thing. When it comes yeah. to adult humans, I, as long as you're doing it to yourself, I don't care. You can chop off any part. You're an adult. Go for it. But when it's a child, right, right. Do, do we trust children to make decisions like that? I don't think we should. Man, <laughs> that's actually insane. That's I'm insane? <laughs> no, that's what, insane. like the first thing you said, where you said they could chop off every part, any part of the... Yeah, you really think it's that your body. Should, like, go for it, dude. You really think that people should have the right to... to be a burden on on everyone by like cutting off all of the limbs that is their own problem <sighs> we're Amer that's an american thing maybe <laughs> yeah, you know that, that's my american right i can chop I mean, off any fucking arm or leg that. i want <laughs> I'm the only one who doesn't think that's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you Gloria. i agree with you Nah, man, if you're an adult, do here. whatever you want as long as you're not, you know, affecting other people with it. Well, you yeah. are! Someone will have to feed you, someone will have to clean no, up just your fuck, if you're gonna turn yourself into a nugget, you lay there until you're dead, bro. It's not my problem, I'm not gonna feed you. <laughs> but, oh yes, realistically, you are. <laughs> Taxes <laughs> are gonna feed that. <laughs> But so, so you agree that maybe we should not no. be performing uh, life-changing surgeries on small children? I actually have no. well, small children definitely not. But I, I actually don't know where the where the barrier is. I feel like why not eighteen? Oh well, I think it, we should probably go lower than eighteen. Uh, I mean, I, what's the but, age of consent in Austria? 
What? You can have surgeries <laughs> before you can have sex. Okay, 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 it's fine. I mean, like, if you're really convinced that you're the wrong gender, then I, I think you probably should have some form of access. I mean, it's it's probably really rare that you, you'd be that that ready for it, but I feel like if you're if you're working on it long enough, then you should eventually get access well, to it. Well, and I think that's an issue that the documentary addresses is that, let's yeah. say there's a teenager who is just unsure of themselves. Now that we have maybe more of a woke culture, maybe their millennial or younger teachers might be encouraging them. Like, oh no, it's a great thing to be trans. You should start taking that. And I don't know yes. if they should be influenced in that way. Well, yes, didn't you that, see? Uh, sorry to cut you off, Jeff. I, I no, was just going to okay. say, uh, wasn't there like a, a random spike of people who identified as trans, or, or maybe it's yeah. just LGBT in general, uh, between I think 2020 and 2019 or 2018, like some crazy amount where it was four thousand percent. Wow. Yeah. Fuck. And, and well, girl, that doesn't this say much though. It, this is, well, it's, it's saying that something is influencing a mass number to suddenly pop up and they're well, popping up i mean up no no you, you literally don't know what the number is because like if it's four yeah, thousand percent that's then true. you know that like the last year you had like almost none and yeah, now you well, have a few more it's four thousand percent of whatever it was at a certain time it's a study yeah, no, but that would be really really relevant time. how much that number was before okay mm -hmm. oh i mean 100 like, just saying four thousand percent is well that's still a sign of disgusting. exponential growth what? It is exponential growth for sure. Yeah, but if you have like one and the next year you have 20, but there's more than one trans growth. person, dude. I mean, we, we don't even know. <laughs> I mean, you obviously have to have an incredibly small sample size for, for a jump like that to occur. So I mean, I, 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 I would assume yeah. the sample size is just people on the census saying what gender they are. Yeah. Actually, I have right. that in front of me. You want those numbers? Oh, right, let's do it. Okay. This is the 2020 census. In the United States, there were 329.5 million people and 86.3 of them identify as heterosexual. And there were 6.6 .6 that refused to answer that. So we're removing almost 7% of people because we don't know. They could be anything that could go higher, that could go lower, but it's 86.3%. 7.1% identify as LGBT. So in those numbers from 330 million people, we're looking at about 23 million people are LGBT in the United States, according to the census. 54% of them are bisexual, almost 25 are gay men, 11.7 are lesbians, and 11.3 are trans or other, which is 3,275,000 people. So 3 million out of 330 million is the number we're talking about, according to their own revealing them through the census well i think that's actually fairly accurate like i think yeah. that you'd probably have one percent trans people out, out mm -hmm. of all people. It, those are the numbers mm -hmm. after the four thousand percent increase yeah well yeah otherwise it'd be oh like no that four thousand percent increase is a study done in the uk oh, okay. i'd have to go looking forward to show it to you that's well, just, those limey bastards who knows what's going on over there but before that though we were talking about affirmation and the, I think when we were talking about just affirming, yeah, sure, go ahead. That therapist they had in there who said she wasn't a woman, so she couldn't answer that question. I can't remember <laughs> her name. Um, but she admitted she was an affirmation therapist and that she listens to them and leads them to where they say they are, regardless of their age. You know, they could be young. Kids go everywhere. But um, she – that is not – Affirmation therapy is not what therapists do. Therapists probe. They go deeper and they want to know why. And they they exhaust all options to make sure something else isn't going on. They don't diagnose. They help the patient bring their own realization to the situation so they can heal. So when a therapist is basically admitting that I just affirm what they want, that's problematic. That's a big deal. Oh, and that you don't help. think that a therapist should just parrot back to you everything that you say <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like they could just uh, save some money by buying a mirror probably could but there could be other things going on you know somebody who could come in and say I I'm, I'm the other sex well tell me more about your life what happened and maybe they uncover there was a rape and maybe they uncover trauma and help them realize this actually might not be you. Like there's something else we have to deal with and exhaust all options before you start castrating boys and sterilizing 
kids. When you're an adult, do your thing, baby. You do your thing, let it be. But these kids, this is, you know, I don't know what your sexual orientations are on this panel, but as a gay man, knowing the confusion I felt growing up and not understanding things. I mean, I never thought, hey, I'm a woman, but I always related to the feminine in me and knew that it was different and odd. And I had these little epiphanies throughout my life. And then when puberty hit, it all made sense and there it went. And so I'm approaching this from that standpoint of understanding that a confused kid about this, if somebody grabs a hold of them and says, hey, little boy, you can do this. You know, I could be sterilized today if I had been that kid today, if that makes any sense. Uh, can I Actually, ask you, a um, Jeff, I, I, I've not talked to too many gay men because um, I live in Iowa, so they, they don't want to live here. And I, I can't blame them. There. I can send them all to your house. I know <laughs> Well, so my question, and hopefully it's not offensive, <laughs> could you explain the, the gay accent to me? Are they just doing that? Like fake, or do they actually talk like that on purpose? Like, is okay. that an offensive well, question? Gonna, I'm going to require you to illustrate the gay accent. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> it, they, it, with a higher pitched voice, like I feel like it's a put on. But then again, I don't know. Because you, you don't talk like that. Up. I don't. Well, I don't understand what you're talking about. You're going to have to illustrate. Oh it. God. <laughs> Lores, please hey, help me out here. Up, uh, I'm a filmmaker, not an actor. Okay. I can't help you. <laughs> Well, maybe Florian? we'll have to move on then. Uh, Florian talks like that anyway. Florian, can we hear that? Oh, jeez. I, I, I kind of feel like Jeff does it in, in a little way. At Not. <laughs> yeah, I admit it. You, you, you did some kind of gay voice training or something. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or does it really come naturally? Do they, is it just to like identify each other or do they? I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, we're a mix. We're I might be crazy. Uh, you might be. It's, it's perfectly it fine. Sense. I'm not. Yeah, it just people do what they do. You know, somebody wants to put on a dress instead of a pair of pants. Maybe they want to be a little bit more girly on a certain day. You know, it's being in touch with your femininity and not being afraid to let it come through every now and then. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, Florian. <laughs> yeah, I should live. Your, Europeans for are Europeans are often more in touch with their femininity than men. Uh, Florian Europeans definitely men, is than American men. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, they're raised well, I, differently, and I find them fascinating. I, I really enjoy conversations with Europeans. I learn a lot because we're <laughs> fucked up. Americans are fucked up. Well, yeah. I think that you you should probably not be so harsh on the therapist. I mean, I, th I think <laughs> well, I've had probably... a lot of therapy. I've had a whole lot of therapy in my life, so I understand that that relationship and what it should be. Yeah, but you can't really judge her just from that interview. Surely she does the, the best she can, and, and she's probably there to find the truth for these kids. I, I don't think she just affirms. Yeah, but. and we also do have to consider oh. that this was an edited documentary. They are pulling out the exact moments of the interview that make the people look the most insane. So uh, I'm I sure understand we, what you're saying. Right. But affirmation therapy is real. It's there, it's out there, and it's part of this. There's a surgeon here near me who caters to this. She's rather well known among this community and she will remove your breasts after a one hour phone consultation that uh -huh. you pull a hundred USD for. No therapy, no letter from a therapist, no nothing. Just walk in the door and do it. And that's about as affirming as you can get. <laughs> I don't think anybody gets turned away. I know so many young trans women, girls, uh, biological boys but transitioning to women that run to her that's that's a little secret i've learned working with some of these kids here that that's there and that's troubling i mean i think th there should be these people there to help when they need it but removing all the barriers to access all regulations and just let these people use their you know commercialization skills to make as much money as they can on these kids this whole movement's funded by the pharmaceutical industry. There's no question why we are all over it today. It's making people money, a lot of money. The GLAD, the organization, um, ugh, I don't wanna go on with them, I hate them, but they made $5 million. They brought in $5 million in 2015 in donations. Two and a half years later, 19 million. And that's when the trans took off. The money is in the gender ideology argument. 
that's where it is. So that's why this small percentage of people is so loud. That's why that politician walked away. Somebody's paying him somewhere. He's getting money somehow. Money's money. Follow the money and you'll find the problem. Oh, man, I, I, I rarely respect it when people call out, follow the money. You guys all rarely get expect it, but That's this is okay. the one exception, right? <laughs> you don't have to respect it. I, I, I'm not offended. I believe offense is taken, never given. So I, I don't take offense. <laughs> You, you just say, oh, they're making so much money. Do you ever question the conservatives how much money they make? You, you are looking to the, the pills oh, no, that Jones is selling or something. Everybody, all of them. Every, yeah. When I well, say why that, do you I waste your time done. on just those ones then? Why, why, why single them out? Well, we're reviewing a movie. <laughs> yeah, come on. We're talking about this film. In my life, I don't single them out. Yeah, we can talk about the NRA next episode if you want. Well, for we should it. talk yeah, about yeah. Matt Walsh and how he's grifting everyone and making big uh, yeah. money on this. Well, yeah, let, let's hear about 100%. that, Florian. 100%. Actually, I have nothing. Sorry. Uh, well, Lorez, <laughs> were there any uh, standout scenes from the documentary that you really want to dive into? Well, you know, that Dr. Phil clip went... I, I was going to say viral, but now I'm I'm showing my age. Uh, a while back, uh, did it not? Was that what yeah. prompted this movie, yeah. or was that just like yeah. a component? Like, all right, we're going to go do the doctor. This will be a great scene in the film, yeah. and it seemed like this this all followed afterward. Uh, yeah. The Daily Wire seems to be carving out a, a niche in terms of what they've been doing with their their films and original content as a reason. Yeah. They had two- did they make that school shooting movie? Like uh, run, hide, fight, or something. They they acquired it, so that premiered, I think, at Venice, and then after this company, Cinestate, got uh, taken down in a hit piece by the Daily Beast because one of the older actors on the like an eighty year old guy, I think, was flirting with a makeup artist. <laughs> Uh, it, it was kind of a very stretched situation. Uh, they managed to take this production company down, Uh-oh. and then they rebranded. They got bought by the Daily Wire and became Bonfire Legend. They put out Run, Hide, Fight, uh, that Vincent Gallo movie, Shut In, earlier this year. And then this is like the first documentary I think they've put out. Dallas Sanye produced this one as well, uh, who I vaguely know from, from that time. Um, and... Yeah, I, I think the the goal of this documentary, aside from obviously trying to get new Daily Wire subscribers, yeah. is, uh, <laughs> it, it seems like that's what the they're goal. trying to, that, That's the ultimate goal, of course. Yeah. Um, is trying to, I guess, create like a mainstream platform where that opinion can be voiced because you don't really see that right yeah. on anything that's kind of you know basic. You're certainly not well, going to see anything like that on ABC, NBC, CBS. Right. And that's because of the organizations like Blab. They don't allow it to happen. And in my third episode, my third season of Survivor, I outed a trans man. That's how I landed in this space to start with. And I later found out that I didn't really out him at all. But anyway, Blab was very instrumental in what went down and how it went down, from what I understand. And Wait, they were like in the editing room? Oh, yes. The fuck? Did they yes. trick you to say that, that horrible stuff? Uh, I, I, I believe in a specific manner. Yes. Impressive. Well, yeah, from what they I heard, it's their own villains. That's well, no, great. From what I heard, the producers were like egging you on. Is that true? Because they thought it'd be um, a good TV moment. Uh, you're never going to get them to admit that. Well, I don't, there of course, they're a, not. There is a dead zone where producers are not supposed to come in contact with contestants without witnesses or cameras or anything. So when they grab you and pull you into the jungle to do your one-on-one interviews, there's an assistant that announces, hey, it's time for you to go for your interview. You go for the interview, walk down this path, and then you go to the set of the interview and everybody's waiting on you. So on that path, you're alone. That way no game can happen, no cameras are there to catch it. So it's that. But right before my tribal, the producer walked forward on that path. And I was confused. And she met me in the middle of it and was like, she did a little tap dance through my head for sure. I knew I was going home. I was super desperate. And some of the things that was said and went down there really shaped my mindset as I walked in. I've later discovered. And so I those words came out of my mouth. I'm never going to not own them. I, I own 100% responsibility for outing this person who was already out but was not acting like they were. And that's just what it is. But Glad got involved and 
forced, I'm going to say. That's my word. I don't know for sure. But uh, really pressured the network to put that in a specific way, to send a specific message. And that message was to elevate the trans person and trash the gay man. Yeah. When there was a reality there that happened that did not hit the air. What wow. happened there that night was not as hateful as what you saw on TV. So that was the first red flag. I was so emotional and went through a really difficult situation at the time. And I was canceled. I faced the cancellation. I got fired from my job. I've been through all of that. I've been canceled twice now. And I think that makes me a voice that needs to speak because what have I got to lose? That's right. I've already I, been on my ass. This podcast, after this comes out, all of us will get canceled all over again. So oh, <laughs> we're all in the same boat now. But anyway, that taught me the, the uh, power of these organizations to manipulate media to put a specific message out there. There's a lot, a lot of money in this. And they're pressuring these networks, I believe, to put their shows out that way. The whole reason I'm talking about this is when you said, you know, the mainstream media is not talking about this. That, that's why. But the underground media and the underground buzz is all over it. Well, Florian, I know you're dying to say something sarcastic, so please let it out. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so happy that, that we finally heard this this insight, so now we can understand Jeff's Twitter. You don't even picture. watch Survivor. What the fuck do you know? Well, you showed me this, this clip, and I was all I needed to know. It, it just makes sense, okay? If you look at Jeff's Twitter, it, it has a trans person kicking off a gay person. And well, that, now, now I understand what it means. <laughs> yes. you, you don't think and that's hilarious true. commentary? It, well, now actually, I get it. <laughs> it's also commentary to what's actually happening in the LGBT community at the moment. Because that's that side, I was a smoking gun in that, and what they're doing. And, You didn't have to trash the gay man to lift the trans up. We could have really had a nice lesson and a discussion right there, but instead it was get rid of the gay man. Yeah, don't and even vote. Don't seen... even vote. Just throw them uh, out. Uh, right, right. That, that your, there's your intention right there. Yeah. They should have voted, but anyway. Oh my um, God. Do you, I, do you ever dream about if they would have voted and you played an idol? Would that not have been the funniest thing that ever happened? <laughs> you want to know what's really fucked up? So you watch it, right? You watch the show, so you know the people. Oh, it's my favorite show. Okay, so JT had an idol. And when we kicked him out the night before, he buried it before he left. Oh, shit. And I, and I was looking for an idol when they called me into the jungle to tap dance in my head. And I was two feet from the son of a bitch. Oh, my I God. I would have found it. <laughs> I would have found it. And then that would have been really dramatic. They, would have, they wouldn't have been able to get rid of me. If you would have done that and voted out Zeke, they would have canceled the season. <laughs> <laughs> I would have voted out Andrea. Oh, not Ozzy? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Well, to, to Varna's defense here, I mean, look, there, I, I, this is all hearsay, but I, I follow Survivor <laughs> online, and I know, for from what I've heard anyway, Jeff, maybe you can confirm this or not, uh, there have been kind of not necessarily similar incidents to that. But uh, I know, for example, I'll just throw out one. I heard that uh, during a final tribal council, uh, during like the teens of Survivor, uh, one of the winners was outed as being like pervy or something or being uh, a little molested. Was it Bob? I'll say. I, Bob. Well, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want to name names here because okay. what if it's untrue, you know? But none of that gets featured and that's just as hot you know, button of a topic. If they were really all that concerned, they could have easily subverted this. I I think in the, maybe they, they went too yeah. far with it because they didn't even vote, right? But, yeah. Well, in know, my opinion, it shows the host and producer's intent. Right. Because they brought Zeke on the season before and they expected him to reveal his story then. That's the whole reason he was on the show. And when he didn't, they immediately turned around and invited him back. Yeah. And I guess they decided I was, as the gay man, the safest alternative to get that storyline out. And that is evidenced, in my opinion, by not allowing me to vote. Because I know, and maybe the situation you're talking about, I don't know anything about that situation, but I know there are others where they have edited around controversial things. Mm -hmm. And so if, if he didn't intend what he intended, he would have had us vote, and he didn't. 
So I, I heard it was that Vlad, but it was also Jeff Probst. Is is it true? And I, you weren't there, obviously, but in the the final tribal of game changers after they voted, is it true that Sarah pulled out a Trump hat and said, "That's right, you just voted for a Trumper to win"? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I haven't heard that story, but she is one thousand percent a Trumper. Yeah, she she's from Iowa, I believe. So yeah. I yeah. love her. I would not, I wouldn't put it past her. And I've also heard rumors that she just won the challenge. So she has won a lot of money on CBS. Did she really? She's very, Sarah is really good at disarming you. Like you don't see her as a threat. It's hard to explain. Sandra's the same way. They have the same skill. And I know Sandra, she supported you. Like when everybody canceled you, right? She was always by yeah. your side. Oh yeah. Uh, most of them were. That's good. I heard privately from everybody. Like privately, I was hearing from everybody. People from the network, people from the show. Like I learned so much. Members of the press calling me saying, hey, 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 that you don't have to feel bad because this went down. I got an anonymous um, email one day from somebody that had a newspaper article attached to it where Zeke is out. He's talking about how he's, it was a, it was a, a story in the press about him being trans. And the final sentence is, I am out and I don't care who knows it. <laughs> Un- unless I'm on an island. 2009. Wow. You know, that was a long time ago. So yeah. then I look back on it. I'm like, you let me sit there and take all of that. Yeah. Anyway, I have an opinion about him. We won't go there. Yeah. Oh, boy. Maybe uh, not. Do you, do you still follow the show, Jeff? Do you watch it or were you put off uh, because of the, the edit and the, the season? I, my last watching of that show was april 12th 2017 <laughs> the um, night i saw what they did to me because i knew what happened and i knew there was a compassionate ending and there was a lot of forgiveness and we had a great discussion and the, the therapist of the show told me she's like it's going to be really ugly for a minute but then that compassion's going to show and everybody's going to be you know have heartfelt feelings for everybody involved and then when the show aired, I was expecting compassion and I didn't. They made me look like an evil, hateful son of a bitch yeah. who just hated trans people and had to put them out there for everybody to hate on them. And you and were literally like a lawyer for LGBT people, right? Unreal, not a lawyer, but I did so much, so much through my life. And then in one second, the trans lobby grabbed a hold of me and threw my ass in the garbage. That woke me up and sent me down a path. And for five years, I was attacked online. I've had to deal with this for five years. And one day I woke up and I said, motherfucker, I'm done. <laughs> and I started fighting back. Yeah, and I've noticed that uh, on Twitter, you've been a lot more vocal about this kind of stuff lately. I'm done. I'm so tired of it. You can only flog a person so many times. Like I have apologized. I have owned it. I've done everything I know to do. They told me to sit down, shut the fuck up, and go learn something. And I did. <laughs> and they don't like what I learned. That's and I'm right. not afraid to talk Jesus. about it anymore. It's how I feel. I got a lot in me. I got several books. I got a documentary of my own. I got so much going on. It's just ridiculous. Well, do you want to plug any of your uh, books while you're on this show? No. Oh, okay. Because oh I'm, AD- <laughs> I'm ADHD. So I work on one for one minute, and then I'll go work on my other stuff for another minute and I bounce around. So okay. nothing's done, but there's stuff coming. I mean, there, I don't know exactly what it is, but there's a lot in my lap and I just need to parse through it and figure out what's best. Well, so that whole thing set you on a course to be like an anti-trans advocate, huh? That's no, I'm not anti-trans. Crazy. I'm not anti-trans. I'm not anti-trans. It's put me on a course to help protect these children. That could be me. In a nutshell, I'm, I don't. I'm not in. I'm not trying to stop anything trans. I want people to live and be free. Yeah, we've we've life. all said adults should be able to do whatever they want. Right. It's it's the protection of the children because I was one of them, and well, that's one of the things in my therapy that helped me. There's a there's a little, you know, there's little peat finders. There's little plastic. Uh, tra- trapezoid looking things that you put your up to your eye and you see a picture. Yeah. Okay, so I found one of those out of nowhere that triggered the shit out of me. And it was me when I was six, maybe, at a daycare center. And I smiled really strained, like, why am I smiling? And my eyes are full of tears, and I look so unhappy. And it took me back to that moment. Right before that moment, 
I was in a room with everybody and the girls had started playing with the dolls and I was over with the girls having a great time. And then they brought a thing of dresses in and I thought, oh, they're beautiful. I remember having that. And I remember the woman, the daycare lady, pulling me away and saying, no, boys don't do this stuff. So you go in and they separated the boys and girls and put the boys in one room. And I was in the corner looking at these boys play with these trucks and I was crying. And the photographer was there that day. So they pulled me in first to take the picture. And there's that picture. That pain in that moment is captured for my whole life. And that is who these kids are today. And it just really attaches me that way. I don't care what trans people do. I support trans 100%. I'm here by your side. Let's do it. But this other stuff that's danger endangering these children, that's what's driving me. And it, what I went through has to mean something. I'm well, not yeah, going to pretend it didn't happen. In that story, I mean, now we know you're a gay man. Maybe that has to do with it. But if that same story happened today, they might start pushing that kid down the, the trans path, right? Right. The wrong person would. And a lot of these kids are falling prey to parents like that. Parents who are so conditioned by this movement now that they know they can't. If their child shows they're playing with a toy of opposite sex, gender, whatever, it throws a red flag in a parent. And then they start. And then they can, they can drive it if they want to. Some parents are actually, I believe, driving these kids to this when it's not for them. There are videos all over YouTube of families sharing their experiences and detransitioners sharing their experiences. I really encourage you to spend a little time listening to their stories because they tell it what's really happening here and the conflation of that concern with a hatred for trans people is awful and it's I don't know how to not make that happen but there's well, a there's a, a line of demarcation for me between the two but what do you do about all the the trans kids that that kill themselves because they don't have access to what they need and and they hear people like you talk about all these horrible things that could happen well But, let me ask you how how confident are you that trans kids are killing themselves because they can't transition yeah uh, in, in, in the movie and this might be a made-up yeah, stat in how the movie. Confident, though i mean there, very, there's been a, lgbt uh, suicide has been prominent forever like trevor project that's a very important thing but I have not seen, and believe me, I've looked, I've not seen any studies that say this happens. It feels like a propaganda term, for, uh, phrase for me, a little bit, until I can see it. The journalist in me wants to see the report that says that. Well, in well, the movie, I, in this movie, there's it. there's one part where the, the person who wants to detransition says uh, that most transgender suicides happen after they get the surgery. And I guess they're trying to imply that it was due to regret, um, but that might be made up for the movie. Yeah, I don't think anything's made up because I, I, I hear all of that stuff. And I think the different organizations pushing a different angle on this ideology are going to have their own studies that will be biased, that will say this, that, and the other. But their methodologies aren't sound. They didn't do a big enough sample, whatever it may be. What I'm looking for is independent, survey research that actually looks into this so that we can really get an idea of what's you know for the people who need numbers and columns what's actually happening i am a hundred percent certain that that all of those suicides are because people near the kids don't accept them okay that maybe yeah. the parents maybe some kind of conservative teachers right. or 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 their their peers or the other kids And that's why they're killing themselves. It's because people put ideas out there that, that trans is invalid and, and it's dangerous and they've ruined their body. And yeah, then they, they want to kill themselves maybe. And I well, think it's, it's really dangerous. I think that helps illustrate that this is a mental situation because people who are not experiencing some kind of mental distress aren't trying to kill themselves. Oh, so and they were so, asking for it. No, that's not no. what he's saying. <laughs> no, but... Okay, not even sorry, close to what I'm saying. I'm just saying that it's rational people don't have those thoughts. There's something going on that brings about those thoughts. And so if maybe it's because they're trans and their parent, parents don't accept them, but maybe not. We don't know. That's the thing I'm saying is I don't know. I'm not saying it's not right and whatever. I'm just, we don't know for sure. And so I try not to elicit fear in people 
to shape an opinion. And to me, that's what kind of that, that argument sort of does a little bit until I see something that shows me that's true. That's kind of how I feel about that, but I'm open to it hundred percent. I would love it for you. If you'd find that for me, <laughs> educate me because <laughs> I am a work in progress. I mean, like, do, you, do, you look, and, do you look at like what, what countries have more trans suicides? Is it the ones where, where they're more accepted or the ones where they're less accepted? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's there. Those aren't there. I wish somebody would do that stuff. I mean, there's got to be a study of what, con- what, what, what state has the most trans suicides, right? Well, get on Lexus uh, Nexus not, and take a look. Not independently, no. Not independently. Oh, oh, not that oh that's how it's... It, it, it needs to be independent. Well, if it's funded yeah. by GLAD, it's probably not going to be accurate, right? Absolutely. Oh, so just it's dismissing right. everything from the other and side to of be the fair, And to be fair, same argument applies for this film. Yeah, he's no. doing the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, this movie has a lot of uh, stuff I did not agree with on both sides. And Absolutely. I think we haven't really gotten into that. I it's disagree well, with everybody's blue hair. I thought that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that whole well, I, blue hair, I wish they would make colored hair cool again. It's just really problematic. Yeah, back in my day, only grandmas <laughs> had blue hair. <laughs> Well, I gotta say, this movie has got to be like uniquely bad. Like this kind of <laughs> outlook on things has got to be okay, not uniquely, but like obviously, I, I think the right wing side is like way more dishonest on this because this movie is just straight up garbage. Like everything about this is just so bad. He asks the question, "What is a woman?" and he never gets an answer <laughs> until he right. goes to to Africa where he right. meets some tribal. Oh, that people. was the best part. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Because yeah. it shows us that Matt Walsh is basically at that level. He's basically a person from a tribe. Whoa! That just- Whoa! <laughs> You're shitting on their culture, Florian? They've lived like that for 50,000 years. They could have well, yeah, advanced they sure if they have. wanted to. And and Matt Walsh chooses to live like that still. Okay, he, he, he could do well, better. He, so he I, could learn I think things. his his the, strategy. These people don't have access to to education, but he does. Whoa! And he, he you chooses... think they're not educated because they live in Africa, Florian? The fuck? <sighs> they, they were clearly some kind of tribal people. Come on. What's wrong with that? Well, they don't don't have a university as tri- a tribe. So I, I think Matt Walsh. He already knows that this African tribe is going to have very traditional gender roles. And I think his strategy was, oh, this will piss off the libs. They can't disagree with black people. If I get all these Africans to agree with Uh, me, they're going to be in a real rock and a hard place. Yeah, you should have proven that to me. I do think that's the brilliance in that choice. Yeah, that It it becomes about race and you can't question it. You know what I mean? Yeah. well, no, I, I don't. I don't accept that. I, I question it. You know, <laughs> yeah. we, we know what Ma- Matt Walsh wants from a woman. It, it's it's stated at the end too. He needs a woman to be weak so he can open the jar for it. <laughs> for her. And, and, and he need he he goes to these people and they're like, yeah, women have this role in society and and, and men have that role. And he's like, yeah, women. Back to the kitchen. That's it. No transition. No rights. Back to the yeah. kitchen. So, Florian, like Florian, if, if you went to that African tribe, what, 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 what would you preach to them to change their ways? Oh well, that that's unnecessary. No, no, because you, you need to fix this tribe. They're living in the dark ages. No, what what no, would you say to them? I'll I'll tell you how to fix it. The only way to fix it is by. But I'm having access to to more resources. Okay, I was worried you were going to say what another famous Austrian said in Resort to Genocide, (laughs) so I'm glad you went the other way with it. Yeah, as well. I think it's fascinating fascinating that they chose a culture that is not influenced by society, that doesn't have internet a lot and doesn't have cell phones a lot and, and is really just sort of basic human on their level of living. I, I see the message in going to them for that. And uh, is it just me, or did those people seem a lot happier than people in the Western world? Yeah, we get mad about everything here. Yeah. Well, I don't accept that either. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's okay. We'd be we'd be happier if we were subsistence farmers. Okay. I well, do no I sex. do think that the internet and social media age has increased uh, depression and anxiety like tenfold. And I didn't see any depressed <laughs> people in that African tribe. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, well, there was certainly a, a bend to the 
angle of that show. Well, sure. I'm sorry, but but those are good problems to have. Okay, well, if you tell us more about how Africans are living in the past. You depressed. If you have everything that's making you depressed, then okay, that's the next level. If you if you have nothing <laughs> and you don't have time to be depressed, that's worse. Okay, so we are better off than them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, that's wow. okay. Man. That's okay. Hashtag I cancel think- Florian. <laughs> It keeps disconnecting me. I don't know what's up with that. Oh well. Probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry that it's controversial. That it's better to be in a in a society where where people have resources. But okay. Uh, I, yeah, I, no, it's I, not. It's not. It's not controversial. I think it's very funny that we're doing the "What is a woman?" episode, and it ends with Florian like shitting on African tribes people, <laughs> doing a Kramer <laughs> style. Really? I'm rant just saying. Here. Yeah, you had the fucking uh, with the the laugh house, the chuckle hut. What was that called? <laughs> what? The laugh factory. Yeah, you had origins. the laugh factory. <laughs> I'm just saying they don't have access to the things that we have access to. That's all I said. Yeah, and they're better off for it. They don't have to listen to this shitty podcast. (laughs) I think we need families to take more control of it. Because that's even though it is great to have all access to all this stuff, the fact that we have it opens the door for a lot and kids can get sucked in by a lot. I think it's important when they're a certain age, you give them the phone. My brother has two kids and they didn't. She is the oldest that's six. 16 she got her first cell phone they didn't let the internet shape her good because florian's all over the internet i think it's very good because i feel like she's super level and she sees stuff on the internet and she's like that's crazy and moves on to the next thing she's not immediately hearing something on tiktok and going oh my god let me pierce my nose and dye my hair right you know. Oh, so you're just happy that she's more conservative because of a lack of education? Yeah, she's not conservative you think going on TikTok is education? Oh <laughs> the fuck? Well, I mean, there's more on the internet than that, okay? That, that TikTok is education. Yeah, yeah bad education. education. There's content there. You, you, you definitely learn something there. that you wouldn't otherwise. There's good and bad, and I don't think it's the answer is to eliminate it. I think the answer is to teach kids how to healthfully absorb it and use it to their advantage. There's money to be made here teach a kid that well you know what i learned recently this is just kind of an anecdote but on the topic of puberty blockers uh, i recently learned that they made uh burt ward tv's robin from the 1960s take some sort of like chemical castration because his his schlong was too big for <laughs> on the tv show and then after know. like the third dose or something he was like you know i, I don't really like this i don't think i'm going to do this anymore and they they had a problem with that so uh, i don't know anything about that that's a fascinating story yeah that's fucked up yeah it's not really related to anything but i thought you know we're talking about gender we're talking about uh some some could consider a castration uh you know maybe maybe that might fit in somewhere so now you yeah. have that well, yeah. should we, uh, I mean, we've been going for about an hour. I don't want to keep everybody all day on this topic. Should we give some of our uh, final thoughts on the movie, maybe, and wrap this up? Sure. So, uh, I was uh, greatly disappointed because not too long ago, I reviewed a movie called Buck Breaking, which uh, is kind of similar in tone, you know, similar documentary. And I thought that film was very funny consistently entertaining and i was wanting that same level of energy and hype for this movie and it really did not deliver uh it was a little bit boring they hit the same points over and over again and it's just a lot of awkward footage of people refusing to answer a question and like getting upset that the question is being asked and it's just that over and over again Uh, hardly ever laughed once and uh i would not recommend it it's not it's not that entertaining to be honest uh, what do you guys think yeah i i i agree it's just bad i i wanted to punch matt walsh in the face all the time <laughs> wow I resorting wanted... to violence florian <laughs> please yes who's the uh, barbarian the now <laughs> sure am <laughs> well maybe there's something to be looked <laughs> but you, you have all these people acting like oh he's asking the wrong kind of questions we can't have him and then the more the, the longer the movie goes the more you learn that they were just right about him he was just so insane and it it really wasn't worth anyone's time talking to him or taking him seriously and it's just just mind-blowing that, that this kind of stuff gets made and gets funded and well uh, i mean he made his own there. movie yeah well he gets paid by people somehow yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, Florian, I, I want to pose this question to you. Uh, do you feel like there's a space for that kind of rebuttal to exist with a budget behind it? Because there's not really anything that I think has a professional sheen to it, at least like this documentary or what Daily Wire produces, um, compared to whatever is the the more mainline opinion on, uh, you know, what the trans issue is. I mean, that's a pretty good question, I guess. Should there be a budget behind telling women to go back in the kitchen and, and people <laughs> to not transition? Um, I, I mean, I guess it's like an American ideal to have freedom of speech, but yeah. I, I don't see the value here. I mean, maybe there's conservative ideas that have more value than this, but, but this one is completely without merit in well, my opinion. Well, I mean, just to be clear, nobody on earth is going to watch this and have their opinion change. Like, this is just preaching to his choir, and I, I liberals aren't even watching the film. Like, you you might be the only one, Florian, and you did not change your mind, so I think it's really Maybe. just, like, I know what these people want to hear, I'm going to make a movie of it, and I'm going to make a shit ton of money. Well, I mean, that's even worse. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you're just keeping but, but, these people stupid. It's awful. Yeah, but then again, who isn't just preaching to their audience at this point? Is anybody actually changing minds with their documentary? Well, right, I, I didn't see this as is all that different from for whatever reason it reminded me a lot of uh bill maher put out a documentary about 10 years ago called i think it was religious that. yeah 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 and it had a very similar tone to this where it's just kind of like daily show style chopped up segments to either make people look foolish or or fall into these traps so that they can use that um so i don't know my feelings about whatever the issues that they're trying to sift through are in the documentary and the documentary itself are two separate things uh, yeah. as a as a you know, as a piece of as a piece of art, you know, it's uh, it's it's lower tier as a documentary as a propaganda tool. I think if you were to show somebody this who's more in the middle, uh, it mm -hmm. would perhaps mm -hmm. change their opinions a, a, a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if that type of person sitting down and, and watching this. I mean, it, yeah, first are. of all, it's paywalled. So there's that. But also, I, I don't know. I don't know how widespread Daily Wire is with their their content in terms of getting it into the the average bipartisan person. Yeah, I think this film actually speaks to the to the chorus for sure. But I think um, separating it as to as the film versus the topic, the topic is what I'm talking about. Right. And the fact that somebody's actually introducing this out loud is important. And I think there are a lot of people in the me in the middle who are hearing how they feel and it's pissing them off because they hate Matt Walsh and they hate the Daily Wire and they can't believe that they're watching this going, thank God somebody is saying this out loud. It's speaking to that. I, I agree that there's a, 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 some changing that can happen in the center because of this film. I agree with everything you guys said, except for Florian. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a given on this show. Almost nobody ever agrees with Florian. Wow. Florian, maybe if you watch this 10 more times, it might change your mind. Yeah, maybe. But I don't know. <laughs> go, go experiment yeah. with that and we'll see. Oh, as no. Somebody who, as somebody who has faced this wall of blue-haired Septim Pierce folks for five years, I will say that the people they chose do respond the way most of them do they were in it, 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 i don't think he chose those people to make fun of them because their responses were in line with what i've seen over the last five years yeah it, it, that really stood out to me when he was interviewing the gender studies professor and the mm -hmm. professor just refused to approach anything academically yeah. would not answer a question and would turn every uh -huh. question back on matt and say uh -huh. well let me ask you what you just asked me mm -hmm. like That's so it. clearly you're you're a gender studies professor because you're not capable of thinking you just want to ask people questions right that he said that guy was textbook um, trans radical activist textbook. Then he just sat there with his legs crossed and his arms crossed and his mm -hmm. body language was so just hugging himself and protecting because he was so violated that all Matt Wall said was, I just want to get to the truth. Yeah, the yeah, word but, truth was like a naughty word to him. I thought that was yeah, funny. He said it was rude and condescending and transphobic. <laughs> well, I, I gotta I gotta tell you, man, this is 
Like, it, he's just asking a question, but, like, this question doesn't mean anything. This, it, like, an analogy here would be if, if you interview cooks, and then all you do is ask them, is a hot dog a sandwich? And they, they never <laughs> That would tell be you. a good documentary, and I think yeah, they would it, have it different would be, answers. Because <laughs> I don't think well, a hot dog are, is a sandwich. There are yeah, hundreds is. of years... There isn't hundreds of years of documented history about what a sandwich is and what a dog, a dog, dog is. Well, that's what I think Which our next project should woman, be. There shouldn't be any controversy. Florian, if you have any chef old- friends we could hook up with and, and <laughs> make a documentary, I would love to make that for real. Huh? Well, I mean, you probably wouldn't be friends with them for long. Just, oh, we're going to get into yeah, a big hot dog argument? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and then when they find the ants, you move on to pizza. Is pizza a sandwich? Uh, I mean, that's even more absurd. I mean, it's bread with toppings. I don't know. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't even get me started, you motherfucker. Uh, I think uh, that brings us to the end of this Izakino. So I'm going to give each of you a chance to, uh, you know, plug whatever you want people to go check out. And uh, Florian, let's start with you. Well, everyone check out my game, Ballfrog, on Steam. It's a difficult platformer. You can play it. It's $5. It's worth a try. <laughs> and Lorez. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at LorezWB. I have a YouTube channel, Lorez Wonderbread, and I have a music video dropping in the next month that I directed uh, with the Orwell's lead singer, Mario Cuomo. So that oh, will shit. be posted soon. Yeah, and I, and I think I, uh, I'm going to drop a trailer soon for a new trailer for Mass State Lottery, my, my featured debut. So look for that. Well, and cool. Mr. Jeff. Guys, I want y'all to send me links to this stuff in your socials and things. I want to follow you, Florian. I do. Wait. Yeah, Florian, we made you a new friend today. <laughs> I am your friend. We are friends. Hell yeah. We might be related somewhere yeah. down the line. Can't wait I for you to buy to... my game. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. If you would have told me five fun. years ago, like one day, Florian and Jeff Varner are going to be friends, I would have shit my pants. <laughs> I was Florian. I was Florian. We were yeah, all Florian well, at one I'll, point. I'll bring you back around. I'll show you the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you can do that. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. I've been so busy and working so hard and just getting this moment to stop for a second. I'll talk about something else. It's good. Do you have anything it. you want people to go check out, Jeff? No. Okay, don't check anything out. <laughs> <laughs> I have no selfless plug. I'm, I'm good. I'm, okay, I'm well, thank you so much for joining us. And if you ever want to come on a podcast again, you're always invited. I love it. You guys are fun. I appreciate it. Bring find something else controversial. Give me a call. Oh hell yeah! We'll do the hot dog documentary next. That'll <laughs> really bring in the views. I want I want to find something that Florian and I agree on. I want to find it. Wow. And I'll, I like I'll, low res. I'll die. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Jeff. You, yeah, you're in the right line of work here. You should be in the radio. Well, or folks. TV. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.